Welcome back to the show, everybody. We got a great one for you this morning. Big Trader apologizes to XRP holders. When will Jed McCaleb's stash run out? We're going to have that for you. Revolut is looking to break the mold when it comes to what PayPal and Venmo have been doing. We'll take a look at it. SEC responds to individual motions to dismiss. And don't forget about the one and only John Deaton and the 16,000 plus XRP holders he represents in that motion to intervene. We'll take a look at it. And Gary Gensler comment that Ripple should play in court. We'll have a listen. Russia says it's ready to disconnect from SWIFT, but what will they use? Finally, what about XRP price? What are the experts saying? We're going to take a look at it. And there's one TA person out here that is calling for a major price move in XRP sibling. That's right, XLM. Let's roll that beautiful footage. This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at Backup Bradley Above and everything that we're talking about here. If you want to talk about crypto with your family, friends, and coworkers, don't tell them what you're holding or how much you're holding. Show them with your merch. This is the best merch on the planet right here, and I can talk about it because I didn't create it. This is Crypto Life right here. This is the best gear on the planet. Show them with your merch right here. Don't show them how much you hold. Hoddle, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Crypto Life right here. Tons of different uh, designs and logos and products that you could be uh, using and wearing and sporting around. Letting everybody know that you are into crypto. And there's even stuff here for the ladies. So make sure you check that out. Link in the description box. And I believe a discount code for you as well. So make sure you check that out. All right. Looking here. The uh, coin market cap is $2.2 trillion plus. Now that is one heck of a number we're talking about right now. And one second, I got to make sure Bobo's Pepper the Cat doesn't sit on my laptop while we're working here. <laughs> Come on, Bobo's. Give me a second here. What you doing? You, you're crushing me. All right. So let me get back to the price. Sorry about that. She loves to sit on my laptop. It's warm. So I think that's why she likes it. Bitcoin right now at $56,775. It's up 14.78% on the seven day, off by almost one and a half percent on a 24 hour. Ethereum has been rocking up the mountain here. $2,919.70, excuse me, $2,919.70, and it's up 2.13% on the 24-hour and 28.59% on the seven-day. Uh, XRP at the number four spot, courtesy of the dereliction of duty by the intimidation tactics of the SEC. We are at $1.58 this morning. We are up 0.85% on the 24-hour and up 50.27% on the seven-day. That's getting the job done right there. Now, Let's go ahead and look at the price range. We're at 158.01 right now on Fiat Link, and we are ranging between 153 and 166. That's where we're at this morning, and we want to keep an eye on that because we know that there is some price points in there. They're showing that somewhere in the neighborhood of 175 is going to be a real resistance point. So we may see, you know, a couple attempts to breach that to get above that 175 range albeit 176 or 172. Some people are calling a range. There are a little, di little bit of a different call there, depending on how you're looking at the chart. But nevertheless, if we can break past that 175 range, a lot of the technical experts in, in this space are saying it is on and upward. And we'll take a look at that even further before we get out of here on this video. This is Peter Brandt, who has almost a half a million followers. He is a professional trader, and he says, I need to express my greatest respect and all for the a the y's and z's who embrace embracing investing trading and, and cryptos in a remarkable way i welcome you to the world of trading and i am learning a lot from you i hope btc and xrp at all go to the moon and beyond he comes down here a little further and he says uh where is it here Right here. He ran into an available character limit. He says, I've been harsh on XRPers and they have proved me wrong. Now, of course, here, uh, formerly known as Cryptopolis Macro Trader says sell out to social media pressure. Um, I don't know if that's the case, but I do know that Peter Brand is certainly making a sincere 
uh, comment to the XRP holders in the space. Now, this is a guy who, you know, has said that, you know, it's not doing nothing or whatever. He's gone back and forth, actually. I have seen stuff over the last many, many months uh, where he was bullish at times and then, it you know, things wouldn't happen with price. And I think he kind of burned out on it having a chance to do anything. And now that we see the, the charts the way they are now, I think he's feeling much differently about it. And shout out to him for acknowledging it. There's no doubt about it. That's very nice. Leonidas here has one. It says, this week, Sunday to Saturday, Jed will be selling 17.3 million XRP per day, slightly less than 18.5 in the past week, was topped up yesterday at 442 million XRP at the moment. Jed holds a little less than 1.7 billion XRP. At 15 million per day, all the XRP will be gone by the end of summer. Wow. And what a remarkable moment that will be to have that out of the way, right? No more will that be an issue about Jed McCaleb's stack of XRP. Now, yesterday, I did a video showing from the recent World Economic Forum Davos 2021 agenda, a video about uh, resetting digital currencies. And it had Glenn Hutchins, Andrew Bailey, who is now the uh, governor of Bank of England. It had uh, many, many other people in it. But the it also had the CEO from Western Union in it. He, and he said that they were using WooCoin, which I had someone contact me and say that WooCoin is actually on Ethereum. What I find interesting about that is also in that video with the news I, I uh, shared with you about Stephen Thomas announcing Codius arrival, which had never really truly went away, that it would be superior to Ethereum 1.0 and 2.0 and XRP Ledger hooks. You know, you have to wonder, understanding the gas fees that exist on the Ethereum network, if the WooCoin, and it is in fact a ERC-20 token, you have to understand that those gas fees, I can't imagine, are sustainable long term. And according to Stephen Thomas, it seems like Ethereum days will be numbered when Codius hits the floor full on board. So we will keep an eye on what Western Union will continue to do moving forward. That is for sure. But it certainly seems that there will be something uh to address for Western Union when it comes to using the Western Union coin as a bridge to all of the transactions they use inside their platform. I don't know that Ethereum will be the solution forever. We will see. Uh, here we see Michael Val Five Links, PayPal and Robinhood continue to prevent Bitcoin bought on their platform forms from being moved elsewhere. A leaked blog post has revealed London-based banking app Revolut is gearing up to allow some of its users to transfer their Bitcoin holdings off of its app. Now, listen, this would be like dynamite for all apps, PayPal, Venmo, Robinhood, to be able to go ahead and get the crypto on the app and then send it off. Currently on PayPal and Venmo, you can't do that. So, you know, this to me, you know, I have to wonder, I, this is the point it brings up for me. And obviously Revolut being out of London, they may have different rules and, and things that they can do there that they can't do here in the U.S., I have to wonder in the U.S., will we get that kind of freedom for the consumers that are buying it on PayPal and Venmo? And I just don't know if the answer is yes. And obviously, we have heard nothing from Gary Gensler on what a uh, Gary Gensler SEC looks like. But let's take a look here. SEC to file response to Ripple's individual motions to dismiss. Shout out to Mr. Yo-Yo, who has a private group, if you're interested. Um, it's, you know, let's jump into this a second here, because this really, uh, the big thing here is obviously, I think most of us know that they are going to respond to Ripple's individual motions. They want to strike down the fair notice, uh, defense from Ripple, right? They want to continue to press on to individually pursue Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson. And the one thing I want to point out here is that you haven't, or the SEC has until tomorrow, May 3rd, to respond to the motion to intervene, which is John Deaton's case, representing more than 16,000 XRP holders. Now, that to me is pretty impressive. And shout out to John Deaton and all the effort that he has put forward. And maybe John Deaton and others from Ripple could actually work to... Uh, 
um, show a video we're going to show you here in just a second. Uh, Hester Peirce says a Gary Gensler-led SEC could lead to a very productive few years for crypto, and it may be so. We don't know, right? We really don't know, but we do know Gary Gensler, now head of the commission, uh, after his nomination from the Biden administration was confirmed by Congress, took a hard line for investor protection when he led the Commodities Futures Trade Commission, CFTC, his tenure there coincided with the institution of the Dodd-Frank Act, leading to a considerable enforcement efforts after financial crisis during the late 2020s. Now, this is interesting to me because, you know, he was very pivotal in getting the work done from the CFTC chair working with the Dodd-Frank Act, which is also what I show often on the channel about the Dodd-Frank Act giving FSOC, the Financial Stability Oversight Council, the ability to deem certain things systemically important to the financial system. FSOC is connected to the Treasury. So this really gets interesting for me because uh, I think it's right here. Let's see if this is it. Yeah, here's a clip from Johnny Crypto who shared this, and this is an older clip of Gary Gensler actually referring to Ripple as a currency. And obviously, this is an older clip before I think they were calling it XRP. But listen here and hear what he says. Ethereum is quite big. Uh, a, 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 a currency called Ripple that you might hear in the banking sector is probably third, if I remember. Okay, the big part there is two things. One, he does call Ripple a currency, but it's the currency in a what? In a banking sector. And we know Brad Garlinghouse and many people at Ripple have been very straightforward with all of us retail investors to tell us that Ripple and XRP is not a consumer-facing product. So this tells me two things. One, Gary Gensler, for at least this conversation, acknowledged it being a currency. And two, it is for the banking system currency called Ripple that you might hear in the banking sector is probably third, if I remember. There you have it. So I think that'd be a nice little piece of video to play for either, you know, John Deaton, if he gets inside the motion to intervene, or even for the Ripple team themselves, and maybe have Gary Gensler come in and explain that whole thing. Here we see stepping out on the international level here, Russia says it is ready to disconnect from SWIFT. Thank you, MC, for this one. Uh, this is interesting because when we jump down into this, I didn't see what I hoped to see. But you have to wonder what the implications are for Russia to truly disconnect from the SWIFT messaging system that is used around the world. And it's used in a political fashion to impose sanctions on countries like Russia. Well, this is due to the major moves that Russia has been making to strengthen their presence around the eastern Ukraine. Earlier this week, European Parliament called for harsh coordinate measures against Russia, including disconnecting from SWIFT. Officials in Europe accused Russia of uh, what Manfred Weber, parliamentary head of the Center of European People's Party, called continuing the course of dangerous provocations. Mm. Fears that Russia might be cut off from the global system have been around since 2014, Ukraine crisis. You'll remember they also, uh, in the not the last administration, but the previous one before that, they actually took over Crimea, Crimea which was a major water port, import-export place, uh, and they took that over too, which I find interesting. And we see this hard action coming again. I don't know about all of that. But anyway, threats to prohibit Russia from using the International Financial Information Exchange System reemerged in recent weeks and worsening to relations uh, between the Kremlin and Biden administration. Washington slapping Moscow with new sanctions, threatening to follow up actions by cutting off Russia's bank banks from the SWIFT system. The Western countries could aim crash to rush to Russian payment transactions and subsequently disrupt the country's domestic and foreign economic activities. Now, the counter to that for Russia is that Russia says they have their own system. As far back as 2014, the Russian Central Bank launched its system for transfer of financial messages, SPFS, that was put into operation in 2015. The principal operation of SPFS is to keep, has kept similar in the way the world's uh, payment system SWIFT works to reduce the concerns of Russian customers and avoid the need to change their usage habits. So far, over 400 Russian companies, mostly banks, including eight foreign banks, use 
the system as an alternative to SWIFT. Russia is not alone in attempting to bypass SWIFT. Iran has also launched a homemade financial telecommunication system known as SEPM to get around the U- U.S. unilateral sanctions imposed on the country. Some believe that the introduction of alternate payment rails will likely make it difficult for Western countries to track payments across the globe and use the SWIFT system as a political tool to threaten or put pressure on other countries. So the plot thickens is what happens here. And we know what XRP's role is and how it is to serve the world. You have to wonder if RippleNet could be the new SWIFT. It is, in fact, been designed to dismantle SWIFT. It works better in every shape, way, and faction. But what we don't know is if there are political puppet strings that could be connected to RippleNet should it be adopted as a new SWIFT platform and could the countries around the world participate in doing the same things with sanctions and things of that nature just as swift's platform itself it doesn't appear to be designed that way at this moment but that is a pretty interesting thought when you think about these things politically now let's talk about the fun stuff which is xrp price okay XRP and XRP to BTC, both sides closed bullish. XRP BTC is now teasing the important resistance target of 0.000029 BTC. A bullish breakout from here will push XRP above the 195 zone, $1.95. And we will see a much higher price in XRP from there. And he says exactly the same thing here, just showing you the chart that he's using an example on here. And this is Crypto Wizard that has more than 5,000 members in his group, and they are paid members. And I don't mind telling you, you don't get to have that many members in your group unless you're actually pretty good at what you're doing. They're pretty damn good at it. Shout out to Billy and Martin. Now, this here is another TA person that a couple people have been telling me I need to check out. And he goes uh, further than what he said about XRP. And he says, this is Joker here, Crypto Joker 12. And he says, when I tweeted charts telling, uh, when I tweeted charts telling me XLM outperforms XRP, I have nothing against XRP. The market is deciding. I'm reporting that is all. Number one, Stellar is making a new all-time high. Number two, above all-time high. Things go fast. It is price discovery. $18 XLM incoming. What? I mean, listen. I don't I don't know chart reading like these gentlemen do, and I don't even pretend to, okay? I have basic knowledge. And that's great, and it helps me at times, but I have to tell you, you know, for these people who spend this time, I really am grateful for their insights. I have no idea whether this happens or not, and this is the first time I've been able to check out Joker and and his calls. I'm going to start following him a little more to see what's going on here. I absolutely have told everyone in the audience that I hold XLM, XRP, and many other tokens, And this is like a major shock to me to see someone calling XLM at 18 bucks. I mean, goodness gracious, you know, um, X Jesus down here. Jesus XRP says XRP 26 bucks, XLM 18. I'm like, wow, I'll tell you what, nobody at this house would be upset about those numbers. Now, you do have to think about taxes. You do have to think about what you want to do with your your holdings and how can you, uh, you know, it's one thing to make the money. It's another thing to know how to keep it, right? There's two things here. One is I Trust Capital has the best crypto IRAs where you can do tax deferred or tax free IRAs for yourself and your crypto. Check that out. Gold and silver as well. Or you could also follow up with taxes. Yeah, taxes. That's exactly right. Taxes are a big deal, ladies and gentlemen, whether we think so or not. Uh, now, I do want to say here, if, if you are interested in taxes, Clinton Donnelly is the foremost authority. And look, you can get his tax service. You can become a member and they will monitor your IRS account on a weekly basis for you. And they will let you know six months in advance if the IRS is in fact planning on auditing you. Plus, they have some great courses to prepare you for how to understand uh, crypto and how to prepare your own tax returns and things of that nature. So it's a pretty powerful course and system he's got set up there. Make sure you check that out as well. That's going to do it for me. 
I'm waiting on some real price action, just like the rest of you. And it looks like from the experts, if we just hang in there, we're going to get it. None of this is financial advice from me or them. But you know what? It is great to really go over this information with all of you. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. Share with somebody you know. And check out all the links in the description and comment section. They are trusted, vetted links of products and services that I use each and every day. I'll catch all of you on the next one.